Well, the revolving door has been spinning fast this summer. It seems uh, we've just barely had time to update our Rolodexes to yet another big business, big wig, and he's headed out the door. How much does all the head honcho turnover affect the companies involved? Joining us now from Austin, Texas, is Hoover's analyst, Tim Walker. Good morning, Tim. Good to see you. Good to be with you. So let's start off here with, uh, with Citigroup, which is apparently losing its uh, second top executive in two months. Trouble in the executive suite there? Well, that's right. It's starting to look like a little bit of a parade out the door, I'm afraid. The executive leaving now is Marjorie Magner, who's the head of the global consumer group at Citigroup. Now, this is just one month after her own boss, the chief operating officer, Bob Willemstad, said he was leaving. Both of these are longtime protégés of Sandy Weil. He's, of course, the chairman who put together Citigroup. Right. His retirement's coming up in just a few months. Now, the company says no connection between any of these things, but it starts to look like a trend. Who, who, well, first of all, she says she's leaving for personal reasons, uh, and we'll get to more of that in a second, but who's likely to assume her duties? Well, they're splitting up her group between two executives who are veterans from within the unit. A.J. Banga is going to take over the international side of the operations, and Stephen Freiberg is going to take over North America. It's very important to see how they run it because this unit employs something like 200,000 wow. people and is responsible for about half of Citigroup's profits every year. She had what a run-in with, uh, with a cab this summer? That's right. This actually gives credence to the idea that it is a personal decision on her part. She was struck by a taxi cab on a street in New York City earlier this year, spent several weeks recuperating at home, and she said that that gave her time to think about what she wanted to do in the next phase of her career. So now she's talking about getting out of financial services, maybe going into philanthropy or academics. Mm -hmm. I'm sure any foundation would love to have someone of her power and talents and reputation. Think. Another high-profile departure uh, in Rupert Mur Murdoch's empire, very close to home, too. That's right. Lachlan Murdoch, the 33-year-old son of Rupert Murdoch, has left his executive post at News Corporation. He held several different roles at once. He's staying on the board of directors, though, and the family says there's no bad blood between father and son. And Rupert's even said that he hopes Lachlan is able to come back someday in an executive role with the company. Meantime, who's filling the slack there? One of those names we know pretty well over here at CNBC. Well, right. The, the famous name is Roger Ailes. Uh, Rupert has turned to a couple of his longtime trusted lieutenants. Roger Ailes is known to be a confidant of his. Ailes is going to keep running the Fox News unit, as he has since it's started up nearly 10 years ago, but he's also taking over the unit that Lachlan was running, which uh, coordinates uh, Fox's North American station affiliates. Now, Lachlan has, what, a, some kind of a company he's running down under? That's right. He's moved his family back to Australia. Yeah. He's set up a little company called Illyria. No news yet on what it does, but presumably it's not in the news media because he has a two-year non-compete agreement with News Corporation. Uh, it, it's funny, he actually has registered the company at the same address as News Corporation's Australian headquarters in Sydney, so uh, maybe his dad's giving him a break on an office lease. Give us the latest, <laughs> maybe, give us the latest dish on Microsoft. They've apparently had a vacancy, if you will, for a long time now, uh, one would think, in the CFO department. What's happening there? This is actually the new chief operating officer. I'm sorry, you're right, the COO, yes. The COO position at Microsoft. Uh, the new guy is Kevin Turner, and if you're looking for an operator, a lot of people look to Walmart. He was the head of the Sam's Club unit uh, at Walmart, and then before that he was a chief information officer. So he has what looks like a deep background, both operations and technology, which should suit him well at Microsoft. Now, he worked his way up, I should say. Uh, he was actually he started as a checker 20 years ago at Walmart, worked his way all the way up to yeah. the executive suite. Now, who's he replacing and where's he going? This is a story of two Kevins, so we have to keep them straight. Okay. Kevin Turner's the new guy. He's replacing Kevin Johnson, who's been the head of sales and marketing at Microsoft for a few years. Now, Johnson isn't going anywhere. They haven't clarified exactly what his new job is going to be, but they've said he's going to stay a senior executive at the company. And Steve Ballmer's actually said that he's glad he's able to retain talent like Johnson. Now, Turner's got his work cut out for him because he's going to be doing sales and marketing and the internal IT operations and the whole COO bit. And this is coming at a time when Microsoft has a wave of new products, especially the new Xbox 360 and the Windows Vista operating system. Does he last longer than the last chief operating officer at Microsoft? Well, back in 2002, they brought in Rick Beluzzo, who was a well-respected guy from Hewlett-Packard, pretty well liked in the industry, but within a year, Beluzzo was out, apparently didn't see eye-to-eye -eye with Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer. Now, Gates and Ballmer have built Microsoft into what it is today. They're both very smart, they work closely together, very intense and driven. It's going to be interesting to see whether they give Turner the chance to run with the ball. All right, we're going to leave it there, and uh, thanks for calling uh, all of the interesting... <laughs> what, you, want to, you want to do the last one, Bill, quickly? 
Yeah, all right, quickly tell us what's going on uh, at Exxon here with Lee Raymond on the way out. Well, an icon of the industry is stepping out. He's going out right on top. Lee Raymond has been running ExxonMobil for a dozen years. He, he masterminded the Exxon and Mobil merger back in 1999, been with the company more than 40 years, and now it's got record profits, more than $25 billion in profits last year. And you note that uh, a particular bane of environmentalist, Greenpeace, welcomed his retirement, calling him a dinosaur. A dinosaur. I'm, yeah. su I'm sure environmentalists are saying hallelujah that Raymond's on his way out. Yeah. He might as well be from Central Casting, the ultimate oil man's oil man, gruff and tough. Okay, Tim, good to see you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Thanks for Ted. sharing the, the dish here in the executive suites. Tim Walker, analyst with Hoover's out of Austin, Texas. My pleasure.